Thank you very much, James. And what a way to start the day here with the hometown hero, the homegrown hero, of course, Scarlet there with a good fan base already out there in the audience. There's a lot of hopes for her to go deep this weekend. We've seen her have some amazing performances in the past. We want to see if she can do it again. Let's hop right into map without delay. Up here in the top left-hand side of Thunderbird in the blue, it is Scarlet. And in the bottom right hand side of the map, playing as the Red Terran, it is Vindicta. You know, in Europe, we've got Hero Marine, Big Gabe. I feel like Vindicta, if you had to have a. If you started having really good results here, maybe a, a potential good moniker for him in the future, Big Miguel, <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> but he's, first, you need to get the results. Oh, he's you big, have to earn that yeah. nickname. And it's such a, it's so funny, right? We talk about like the different barriers as a player where you're cracking through to different levels and Vindicta's getting close to that next level where there's such a big gap between the Neeb and Scarlet, the very top of the NA scene and, uh, and the guys who are just below it. But I feel like, you know, Futures aren't there getting close. Uh, Vindicta, very close in his last match with Scarlet in Challenges. Zombie Grub was talking about that up there on the desk. And uh, I'd love to see, you know, how these two face off. Vindicta, infamous for mass nuke play in the late game. He is the player yeah. who will just hit every base. He'll be sneaking ghosts past you into your tech, trying to take down your, your Spire, your Hive, all that sort of stuff. And uh, he's done it well against Scarlet in the past as well. So definitely a player who's capable of playing the battle mech, playing the long game. And when that kind of matchup happens as well, and you know, they have close games, we always think the, pl the player that did well, you know, Vindicta is gonna come back and like, you know, be more refined the next time around, maybe do better, but you have to think about Scarlet. She probably thought really hard about those games and what to do better, and will want to show that here, her improvements on uh, how to deal with that style better and uh, with Vindicta and uh, everything that he can do. And that's one of those things, all right? You can get close to taking someone out, but once you're on their radar, you get someone with as much RTS experience as Scarlet, just putting all of that brain power towards disrupting your play, and. Definitely going to be interesting to see what she brings out. Scarlet, a player who really has been much more aggressive in the recent years of her StarCraft II history. Her historic championship in Pyeongchang at the start of last year was uh, very much off the back of aggressive play. It yeah. was not the old sitting back and playing defensive Scarlet that, that we know from 2012. She's a new beast, a new creature. So uh, she's going to no doubt be throwing some curveballs his way. Yeah, I think she's very well rounded. Like her recent series against Massa as well, you know, in the first few games, she was defending the proxy barracks really well and then counter attacking when she needed to. And then later on, went for like a really nice rush on Turbo Cruise that really caught Massa off guard and just kind of killed him right out. And so that was like a very solid victory. So she's really evolved. And I feel like in StarCraft nowadays, everybody has to evolve to that stage where mm. you're able to mix in a lot of different things. Yeah, you can't be a one-dimensional player. I mean, more and more, it's about not just doing the correct strategy for the matchup, but it's the correct strategy against the player, and it's also adding enough variance so you're not predictable. Uh, the moment you become predictable in StarCraft, a clever opponent can always take advantage of you, and that's why there is often an attempt to keep that uh, question up in the air. And you talked about Roach attacks, Todd. There's a bunch of extra overlords. A very early Roach Horn don't finishing get too up excited, here. Big. <laughs> I don't know, man. This this really does look like uh, an attempt. Oh, the Reaper does it. I think it saw that Roach Horn already finished. That's a really fast Roach Horn. Yeah. I would be putting a bunker down potentially. Yeah, that's eight Roaches on the way. It looks like a Battle Cruiser opening for Vindicta, but I don't know if the Battle Cruiser will be out in time to stop this. Immediate bunker goes down for Vindicta. Yeah, that's really good. He's keeping the marine production going out of the reactor barracks. A second yeah. bunker goes down. This Great is, read. This is meant to counter what she thinks is happening, which is a greedy build here into quick tech towards battle cruisers. Scarlet's usually known for Ling Bane Muta. Like, she's extremely good at this yeah. type, but in this game, taking the more aggressive approach here. But she's with this committing. being scouted, like, it's going to be really tough to pull off, I feel like. And she's not droning. I thought after it was scouted, she might back out of it. But look at this. Whilst she's mined down the mineral patches to get through, the fusion core's being cancelled. There's two bunkers. A tank and a banshee are about to be out. Uh, I mean, as long as... Look at that bunker spacing so they can't be hit by the same bile. 
I don't know. I don't think there's any way this breaks through for Scarlet. Uh -huh. I shouldn't call it too early. Tank's on the low ground. <laughs> Tank's super exposed there, and there need to be more SCVs. You can't underestimate this, Vindicta. That is a huge all-in attack from Scarlet. She has to break through right now. The Tank falling so early in this defense. The bunkers, one of them going down, the other one so close to falling, but that Banshee dishing out a lot of damage. The Biles finally take out the bunker. The Banshee is going to be slowly wearing this down. Where's the damage out? Well, for Vindicta, most of his army has fallen. It's just that Banshee. The SCV is pulling to the ramp. He's frantically trying to defend. Yeah, let's see. SCV is trying to buy some time there, but they're kind of by themselves. It's just a single Banshee doing damage here. The second one's not out yet. The tank either. They're not even close to finishing right now. Vindicta trying to evacuate the main base, but he's not even mining that much right now. Whereas Scarlet's still on 51 drones on the other side of the map. She's gone back into drones. GG. And a quick, you know, big, quick one. I didn't think this was going to work. And then you said, I don't think Scarlet can breathe through that position. And I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> I just went oh. through the defense like sweet butter. Oh, you know, the bunkers, they just evaporated. He's going to be kicking himself, man. I mean, you put that tank on the high ground, that will not work. 100%. You cannot put the tank that far forward, but... I think Vindicta had the same thought that we did. He was like, oh no, I've scouted it. She probably is just going to build a few Ravages, do a poke, and she's probably droning. And I think that was that moment. His Banshee flew out and he went, oh gosh, that's like five Ravages and a ton of Speedlings. The tank went down at the start of the fight, and the tank really is the big damage dealer. Its splash damage on those clumped up units is, is game changing, but... Ah, that's the sort of uh, sort of thing where sometimes you're so busy thinking about Scarlet's next step. It's such an intimidating player to go up against. Just, you're kind of thinking, you know, I can't overcommit to this defense. I can't be so worried that I'm just sitting here and uh, letting her pick away at me while she macros up behind it. But a uh, big misstep for Vindicta to start off this series. Scarlet with a nice momentum win. Yeah, I think the units also that like, kind of standing behind the bunkers is like usually the way you would want to do it. But that allowed the, Ra the Ravagers to go in and use a lot of causive Biles on top of the tank. And then after that was gone, there was uh, not nearly enough damage to really get rid of all of these Ravagers and Roaches. Yeah, potentially even more SCVs being pulled could have been the way. You know, if you've got the full yeah. surround even on the front, you actually limit the Zergling surface area. Uh, the Hellions were microed quite well from Vindicta. It did roast down a lot of those Zerglings, but uh, it's always one of those rough games that can get under your skin. It's going to have to show some stage presence and uh, bring it back in the next one. Tough way to start a series for winning tie, but it's the best of five. It's still got everything to play for. Let's get started here with Acropolis being on second map, starting in the top left hand side of the map, playing as the Bluezerg, representing Newbie in Canada. Give it up for Scarlet. And down here in the bottom right hand side of the map. The up-and-coming Terran player representing Alpha X in the red. Give it up for Vindicta. You know, when you play the game, what you see is very different than what we see here, mm. obviously. And uh, for us, it was very clear-cut what Vindicta needed to do here to win from the casting desk. But I gotta say, Scarlet definitely was very bold with the amount of units that she made and really committing to the attack. Like some players, once the Roach Horn has been scouted, they know that the opponent's gonna start making bunkers and tanks and they'll just go into a ton of economy and drones and kind of play that mind game of my opponent thinks I'm gonna attack him, he's gonna overcome into defense, so I'll just build up my economy and get ahead in that instead. And this is what makes StarCraft a great game as well, is that it's a game of incomplete information. So heading into the next map or even the rest of the series. Now Scarlet, she's kind of got, you know, the momentum, the upper hand in that she's the one that's going to keep Vindicta guessing and she can maybe make some adjustments where she maybe would try to sell. She's doing the same thing, but she wouldn't be with some uh, aggression or even any kind of early uh, road run being dropped down in those games earlier. Definitely something that's going to be weighing on Vindicta's mind. Has to weigh up those options and make sure he stays safe. It's always a little bit worrying when your opponent shows they're willing to take a bit of a riskier, more aggressive assault to start off the series. And it's a very much an internal battle, one which all StarCraft pro players have to go through. It's learning to control that emotional response, which is to, to be pa panicked. It's to be overly afraid of those attacks. But you've got to stay calm and play your normal game. 
you can't read too much into it. Just, uh, you know, a very small adjustment with how the defense was positioned. A few more SCVs to repair, the tank a bit further back, potentially on the high ground to be safe. And this changes things. Vindict has to just play the same solid game he's played thousands of times before on the ladder. Yeah, because and, other uh, than that, his build order looked pretty good. You know, he had the third yeah. CC pretty early, he was going to go into battle cruisers. Obviously, Scarlet. He had a very different idea of how this should go, and we're going to have Pneumatized Carpace research pretty early here in this game for a lot of additional scouting. I think Scarlet, she wants to make sure exactly what she's going up against mm. on this map so she can start reacting to it, dividing, good, good devising some plan. I like to see this. You know, we saw Lambo uh, doing it yesterday, three games in a row against Hero Marine. And that cheaper Overlord speed upgrade, 75 minerals, 75 gas, is going to be kicking in just past the three minute mark. Scarlet delaying the third for this, but still going to be focusing on an economic opening. Going to see exactly what's coming out. And so far, just a very typical opening again for Vindicta. The Hellion production, the Starport finishing up, of course, is when that Fusion Core tech opens up as a possibility. And a super early stim starting up here for Vindicta. Interesting to see uh, the Viking being made here, even though there's pneumatized star base. Vindicta wants to make sure he can clear out all of these overlords around his base. And then from there, stay uh, rather unpredictable, if possible. I believe that was the Reaper there. Yeah, got and trapped. Zergling's on the low ground, Queen on the high ground. And the stim seems to be continuing here, so uh, Vindicta... Uh, potentially planning a two base all in. We're gonna have to wait and see. Overlord comes back in, sees it. It could, of course, just be a fake. It does kind of scare you a little bit when you see that that tech lab upgrading this early as the Zerg player. We are gonna see a uh, little bit of a swappy swap here. Scarlet's really well known for her Link Bane Muta. And once upon a time, when as part of the meta was, you know, that huge Muta cloud that a lot of Zergs were getting. She was like one of the absolute best out there at using that style. Nowadays, we don't see nearly as big Muta clouds, but you're going to be more Zergling and Bane heavy on the ground, and she's still extremely good at this style, with Baneling Bombs even. Some epic ones were used uh, in the past. And in some of her recent games and series, I really liked the way she was also transitioning into Hive, you know, grabbing a couple Ultras at first and then going mm. pretty quickly into Broodlords. She makes those transitions and you need, like building the perfect unit composition look effortless. It was really impressive, I thought. So if she could reach that stage of the game, I think she'd be really comfortable with uh, trying to go for a siege and finish the game. Yeah, definitely. I think early, late game, Scarlet, very, very powerful. I think if it goes to end game, like lots of mass ghosts, battle cruises, that sort of stuff, I actually would give Vindictor an edge uh, over her just from past experience of watching the two kind of battle in that stage. But that's very deep in the end game. Like we're talking, you know, six bases versus six bases plus every single upgrade out, all that sort of thing, things going down. It's a pretty late battle cruiser transition from Vindictor. And yeah. that does make it a bit more surprising. You don't expect it to be coming down so late. It's been hidden very well. Swapping into battle back after showing that stim upgrade for so long. Scarlet going for a spy, but she's going for the Roach Warren as well. And often it is Corruptor, Roach Ravager, Baneling as the answer to this. Could just be a safety Roach Warren. I think it's it's a good choice in this meta where players are seamlessly swapping back and forth between mech game to game, mech and bio. It's good to have that Roach Warren up for safety. You can always just add the Roach speed, build a big round of Roaches, and that's going to help you against the Blue Flame Hellions a lot. Yeah, when I look at the timing on that Spire against the uh, Battle Cruiser that's being made, if Scarlet grabs a bunch of Corruptors here, and then the Battle Cruiser uses Tactical Jump across this, the other side of the map, it's going to get taken out very quickly. Obviously, it's going to have one Yamado to work with. Yeah, so he uses that. Two Corruptors on the way in the production type. Scarlet spots the Battle Cruiser. How much is this really going to do? I mean, there is yeah. almost Yamato Cannon finished, but... Will the Bad Cruiser even be able to get out against the Corruptors that are being made? The timing on these upgrades is really weird. Vindictor, of course, didn't want Scarlet to know what was coming this game. Did a bit of trickery with the opening, trying to hide it. But as a result, the aggression very slow to get across to this Zerg side of the map. You can see the creep here finally is getting pushed back a little bit, but it was already so far out on that north side as well as that southern side. And it's uh, doing very well. And uh-oh, Battle Cruiser's in trouble. Tactical jump off cooldown. You called it, Todd. This first battle cruiser is in a world of trouble. Four corruptors going to chase it down. 
and uh, nothing else protected there. Yeah, with the Queens kind of dealing with that, Vinicta thought it, there was maybe a little bit of weakness in the defense on the other side here, but Scarlet is well ready with Roaches, and the first Battle Cruiser will be taken out. Vinicta still going for another one, though, uh, as we see in the production tab. Maxfield Accelerator on the way, Blue Flame getting a little bit of everything. Hmm. Still going to be going very heavily into mech. No sign of a transition into any kind of heavier air units just yet. It's going to be one more command center, some turrets. Yeah, I mean, Vindict is a player where right now I definitely think this position favors Scarlet. She's got control, but we've seen him make some awesome comebacks in the past. And with that upgrade, uh, you know, Tab just kind of plonking along. Vindicta is going to be getting a Liberator range. Magfield, that is the Cyclone upgrade that doubles their Verse Armor damage with the lock-on. We've got the Armor Plating as the focus, so only single Armory upgrades, fourth Command Center. These are all things that are going to help Vindicta solidify his position in the late game. That being said, 2-2. Two, two. Melee and ranged upgrades on the way for Scarlet. She's got her Hive on the way. Infestors oh, are starting so to come out. This the Corruptor's is... already out <laughs> because she made those to, to kill the Battle Cruiser. So that means wow. as soon as that hive finishes, Greater Spire is going to start. And then Scarlet can siege so early in this game with both Infestors, Broodlords, everything she's going to have on the ground. That's insane. The Battle Cruiser is going to dive in the main. Might get a couple of workers with some good focus fire. Nicely done here by Vindicta. Yeah, it gets four workers, teleports out, a queen. Little, little bits of harassment he'd like to build up, but uh, I definitely I agree with you, Todd. Right now, if Vindicta could see what we could see with that greatest fire on the way, uh, he might be a little bit worried. Cyclone, Hellion, Liberator, really good versus the ground army, but not a lot in there to deal with those Broodlords. Often players opting for Thors recently. Wow, nice catch. I really feel like Skull is going Super Saiyan here in this series. Like, Vindicta really got on her radar with his recent performances, and Scarlet knew that Heading into this match, she was going to need her absolute best, and that's exactly what she's, uh, she's giving him here today. And oh. So far, looking pretty convincing. Vindicta is going to fight back, try to get some of these drones here on the other side of the map, as we have three more Corruptors on the way being made. Adrenal glands being researched too. Yeah, the Hellion Cyclone multi-prong starting to come in. Good fungal there, but nothing to capitalize on it. Queens, of course, not the large damage dealers. Just trying to hang on on the fourth and the fifth base at the same time is Scarlet. She's got 82 workers up, a big economy. Adrenal glands and those two, two attack upgrades are about to kick in. Vindict has got the fourth base down. He's still building Cyclones and Libs mostly. And seven Broodlords on the way. With Vindicta's army, how is he supposed to deal with this? Yeah, this is going to be tough. He needs to start that Thor production, get a few Vikings. I know he likes Ghosts. He starts a Ghost Academy and two more Barracks. Wait, That's not going to be in time. Yeah, you have to assume Scarlet is going to want to siege ASAP as soon as those Brutalors are finished. It's nine of them being morphed in total. She's getting Spines on the other side of the map, making sure that she has some static defense because obviously there's going to be a siege and a move out. I mean, those Liberators, they kill a bunch of drones, but those can very easily be replaced here by Scarlet. Yeah, this is an awkward position right now. Oh, wow, that's lovely, actually. Sixth base snipe goes down. Vindicta swinging in with some big harass, but his command center is exposed at the front, going down. And hanging onto this planetary is going to be a big ask. He's, he's got a Thor out. He's got a battle cruiser. That's the beginnings of a little bit of anti brood Lord, but with a ton of Queens underneath it, a good amount of Roach Ravager, this is a hard ask. The tank's starting to fall. Liberator Harass doing huge amounts of damage to Scarlet's economy. But I mean, what is there that shoots up? A Cyclone gets a lock on, Not almost much. takes out a brood Lord. Transfuse instantly heals it up. A single Viking, a Battle Cruiser, and a Thor trying to take on Scarlet's gigantic push. But the brood Lord's standing strong. The Queen Transfuse is good. And those Broodlords raining down death and destruction. The Planetary Fortress standing. The repair, though, has been broken. The SCVs have been biled down. And with that, the Planetary Fortress is going to fall. The Liberators there are going to go down as well. The Broodlord Corruptor Ravager push Scarlet here, just controlling this game from start to finish. And she is not going to take no for an answer. 170 supply to 110. The last fungal growth going down. A wave of infested Terrans to wear through this army. And up on six bases, up against a three base Terran, crushing through the last little vestiges of his defense. This was a decisive 
game two from Scarlet. And the Queen of Blades absolutely swarming the American player here, trying to hold on with his last few units on his side of the map with those stores on the high ground. Queens obviously not going to be able to retreat. Battlecruiser is solo on hit points. He's going to pull that back just in the nick of time. Vindicta didn't really mount the defense here. Links are going to come in, but there's quite a few Thors here helping to deal with this. Corsival being used, but it misses on that one. Battlecruiser, Corruptors are going to rejoin that location. Scarlet still on 84 drones of the back of this. 59 SCVs for Vindicta. It hold, he actually holds on here <laughs> for now. I'm amazed that he managed to even hold on. But uh, yeah, definitely a tough one. He did so much economic damage during the start of that push, but Scarlet rebuilt every single worker that went down and more while the push was happening. She's up on 87 workers. Yeah. She's got those six bases. Uh, she's just comfortable right now. And Vindicta struggling to retake the fourth base. A couple of Thors, a couple of Liberators and Hellions. His upgrade's way behind. And uh, Scarlet's just going to make a ton of Roaches, a couple of Infestors. That, she's that continuing was, her upgrades. With everything that Vindicta was doing, that was such a sick siege. Like, an 11 minutes, nine Brute Lords siege that, <laughs> I mean, it's just so hard to be ready for, right? Unless you're going to yeah. go for, like, multiple starports and... I don't know, like even like with Vikings, it still would be really hard to, to hold on against this because Scarlet brought the Queens and that put a bit of energy. Yeah, Hellion attack into that base is not going to be happening anytime soon <laughs> with that many spine crawlers. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see Vindicta maybe focus a bit more on just getting in Scarlet's face earlier in this game too. Whereas he was focusing more on trickery, trying to hide his tech, went for the late battle cruises, but we saw that Scarlet, she just took advantage of that, had those fast corruptors up. I do love Vindictor's harassment. The longer the game goes, these Liberators, these Hellions just keep going in. But you can see at these moments where there's kind of a lull in the pressure, it doesn't achieve all that much. Like, finally, yeah, Liberator gets a few. Hellions on the north might find a few more workers. This is nice, but when you're talking about an 80-plus drone Zerg player, they can make up for those losses. Just in the blink of an eye, even here with 16 workers going down, uh, Scarlet instantly rebuilds eight, and uh, it's just a matter of time until she rebuilds the rest of them as well. Infestors, Neural Parasite now on the way. Banelings finding the mineral line! Oh! Ouch. You kill 16 of my workers, I kill 16 of yours. And it's a lot harder to rebuild those SCVs, that's for sure. Vindict is down 40 supply right now. He's trying to do what he can. Scarlet's making everything, by the way. Like, she's making a whole bunch of Infestors, now going to Vipers. Neural Parasite's going to be researched as well. Stealing away some of these stores can be uh, quite nice in some of these fights, if possible. Yeah, these guys are building up on energy as well. This is going to get really scary here in a second. And she really delayed the Broodlord's addition, and I mm. like that because, you know, it wasn't necessary here for a while. All she had to do was defend against Liberators and Hellions. And we're going to have wave number two here of the Broodlord's Siege towards what I'm guessing is going to be the same position as earlier with the Planetary Fortress. Yeah, these Hellbat Cyclone backstabs coming in and doing some good bits of damage for Vindicta. The Infestors, though, catching the aliens on the right-hand side. Vindicta tries to click on those Infestors, unable to get those down. And, uh, yeah, this is such a hard position now for Vindicta, right? You're going to try to defend this army. Thor's being added in. There is a good little Viking count. I think that's kind of the maximum number of Vikings. Past that, they stack up too much of fungal growth, parasitic bomb landing on them. And Scarlet, I, part of me does wish she went Swarmos after that big fight where she broke the fourth. Right now, she's she's been maxed for a little bit. She's waiting for the Broodlords to finish, but she's got to get a move on. She's spending a lot of time dilly-dallying. Yeah. And I think her goal here is basically hit with the Broodlords, the Thors come forward, you're going to Neural Parasite as many of those Thors as possible, and you're going to go in. So the trick for Vindicta is he needs to use those Liberators and these Ghosts that are coming out to get rid of the Infestors. If he can siege up, take down the Infestors with tanks, Liberators, maybe land an EMP before they get their spells down, that could change things. But right now it's tough. Scarlet's army has the advantage. She's got those Broodlords overhead. She can't waste too much time though. She's letting Vindicta catch up in supply here. She's dawdling a little bit with this push. She doesn't want to make an overstep, but you've got to be worried about this mech army the more it grows. Yeah, Vindicta would love to be able to complete and then Shockwave here to be able to deal with these Infestors better and upgrade which yeah. According to a scientific poll that was run by Rotterdam on Twitter recently, it's bigger oh, yeah. than the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, indeed, I think uh, Vindicta would love to see a supernova-sized EMP in the middle of those infestors. 
And uh, that planetary is getting low. It's not getting repaired fast enough. Oh my lord, the Brood Lords take a snipe on that planetary. I love Vindictor's patience, though. Yeah. I think this is the right move. He's just got to wait for more units. Uh, if he can land those EMPs, if he can have enough Liberators sieging to take out those Infestors before the Neurals really do a lot, that's going to be really big. And he's doing a bit of counter harassment at the same time. I mean, this is what we've talked about. We've seen Vindictor make comebacks versus Scarlet before in Challenger. And you know what? I think the longer he's in this game, the more he's fighting his footing, the more he's getting in his comfort zone. Can he reposition his army, though? She's rotated to the oh, north. Oh, he didn't realize. He, oh, no. He hasn't reposition he might eat fungals on the way up there trying to deal with that. Yeah, that Planetary Fortress gonna die real quick against this much army here. Oh, there's no. a lot of Zerg. Vindicta moving everything in position to try and deal with this big first fungal. He's gonna land. These oh. investors have to be careful. There's no enhanced shockwave. Big parasitic bomb lands. Fungal as well. Just draining those Vikings. Another fungal growth goes down. And the fleet of Vindicta falls. So many Vikings and Liberators gone. The rest of them deep in the red and orange. The Thors are still standing strong in front of that. But Vindicta's lost too much of his economy. He's got to push forward. He has to punish Scarlet now. Some of the Thors in range of the Broodlords. But a lot of infested Terrans going down as well. Broodlord, infested Terran up against this army. And look at it back. Oh. There's not a fit for Vinicta. He's just going to tap out Scarlet with a very convincing series so far. Goes so, up 2-0 yeah. oh in this best of five. Experience. After two fantastic sieges. Just crushes through. And uh, you know what? Not giving any moments of comfort to this young man here. Vindicta, he's been uncomfortable in this series, but I feel like towards the end of that, we started to see the Vindicta we know and love. Liberators just kept hitting those bases. Hellions, Cyclones running in, picking things off. It's very difficult, though, when you've got so little space to work with as the Terran. You don't have a lot of extra turrets. You can't even afford sensor towers because his bank was so low. Whereas if you've got all that, you can kind of prepare for those army rotations. You can sneak a ghost across, drop an EMP on those infestors. You can start to kind of move your Vikings in and out and pick off those Broodlords. Whereas we were seeing Scarlet able to initiate those fights with zero threat of, of returning fire. She could just come forward, pick off the planetary, pull yeah. back. Normally it's meant to be a bit more of a dance where both sides are threatening each other, but Scarlet had all the momentum, the creep spread, the map control, and uh, yeah, very cleanly advances to that 2-0 advantage. Yeah, the reason she was able to do this so well is that she shut down everything that Vinicta threw at her, starting with that first battlecruiser. Even the first nuke here that just completed wasn't even able to be used like before the game ended. Scarlet looking absolutely fantastic here in this series and uh, showing her experience on the biggest of stages mm. against a young upcoming player here in Vidicta. Who's finding out what it feels like to play against somebody of the caliber uh, of Scarlet here in a WC circuit tournament on the stage. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always funny with these, you know, this is a one versus one competition. And when you're coming in as one of the newcomers to the main stage, it's inevitable you've got to get through these monsters. Scarlet, of course, at rank 9 in the WCS points. A big monster standing in the way, of course. The Hope of Canada here in Montreal at WCS Fall. Down here in the bottom right-hand side of Triton. In the blue, give it up for newbie Scarlet. <laughs> Her opponents in the reds, representing USA, it is Vindicta. Gonna have to find a little bit more momentum yeah. to get going in those games here, because so far it's been all Scarlet. And I don't know, maybe like... A, Maybe it's been a little bit predictable. Obviously, Scarlet in the previous game opened Numatai Scarapace, so she could scout everything she wanted, and then once she knew what was coming, it feels like her build was exactly catered to countering what was going to be thrown at her, which in this case, the Corruptors came out on time to really not let that Battlecruiser get away, and then once you kill that first yeah. one, it's like you've already got all the momentum in the world because your opponent invested so much into this. I, I actually think it comes a lot down as well to Vindicta delaying that Battlecruiser so long. Like, it was starting when a lot of Battlecruisers would have already been in the Zerg base. And I think that opening looked a little bit awkward. If I have to identify Vindicta, I feel like when he goes uh, mech as a player, his openings sometimes do sit back just a little bit more than I would like it to see. I want to see him a bit more in Scarlet's face with the harassment. I think one of the big powerful parts of mech is how quickly 
you can transition from some very aggressive Hellion Banshee, some Hellbat Battlecruiser, all these sorts of things, into just non-stop Hellion Cyclone. You can keep the pressure up, and you can keep your opponent uncomfortable. I don't think it's actually that important for him to trick Scarlet with his opening. If she's going to invest in Overlord Speed in that previous map, you don't need to kind of fake the stim out for, for over a minute, delaying your Battlecruiser while you're doing it. So definitely think uh, this time around it's going to be a different map, a different style. Scarlet not going Overlord Speed, Vindicta slowing down the third base with that Reaper and that SCV, nicely done. Yeah, the fact that we're on Triton, obviously you have to adjust your build order, like a very wide ramp around the natural, which uh, in particular, I guess, Falteran, you have to be mindful of if you were to be attacked with, you know, a pretty massive army, like the positioning of everything is going to matter oh. quite a bit. Sneaks some links. Very around nice. and he's gonna get a snipe on that one marine that was trying to shoot an overlord it couldn't get to anyway <laughs> and this is really good because the reaper's so far away and uh another scv here oh almost goes down but basically this means the barracks can't swap with the factory so you're yeah. not just delaying that orbital you're stopping those scvs from mining and you're stopping the Hellion production from oh, getting out as quickly as your opponent would like. And she gets one more. Oh my lord. Scarlet is so comfortable right now. She's in yeah. the zone with all the momentum in the world, being up 2-0 and, oh, and now achieving so much with, what was that, two, just two links? Yeah, I mean, that was, this is a hash first two links as well. This is literally, she sees the Reaper blocking her third, so she's like, eh, I'll sneak two links across, why not? And uh, any damage you get off that is, is a bonus. Uh, behind this, Vindicta does have the third command center. Similar opening build order to map number one for Vindicta. Reaper and a Hellion going to start the pressure, but it's slower and it, it does lack the oomph that you would uh, expect here if you had that faster reactor down and those Hellions going two at a time. Fusion core. It looks like it will be a battle cruiser opening. Roach tech on the way for Scarlet. And Vindicta not quite rushing that third command center that quickly here and this time around. Reaper gonna get a clear scout of the main base, in particular of how much gas has been mined. And he sees that it's not an, an incredible amount just yet. I mean, have it, uh, sorry, Lair is halfway through done, and we've got a Roach run on the way. Do you think Scarlet might want to play aggressive here, or she doesn't need to, I guess, right? I think right now with that Evo Chamber, it signals that she probably wants to start some upgrades, but I'm thinking maybe a mid game, like a big plus one Roach speed timing of like 55 drones. Always potential carapace might start up as well. Uh, yeah, which is actually, oh, nope, cancels and starts the plus one range, interesting. So the plus one carapace, very good at uh, keeping your drones and queens alive against battle cruisers. Really good at keeping roaches alive in general versus Hellions, SCVs, Marines, all these kind of early game units. And for now, uh, lots more workers on the way for Scarlet. The battle cruiser production kicking in here for Vindicta. Not the fastest battle cruiser, once again, though, from yeah. Vindicta. I feel like his fusion core was done a, a while ago and uh, didn't start it right away. It's going straight to four gases on the natural. So definitely does look like we'll see a second and third factory going down momentarily. And Yamato Cannon going to start yet again here. Vindicta seems to be a big fan. Curious to see whether he's going to tactical jump across the map or just fly there so that he has it to uh, get out. Yeah. Scarlet with a clean scout sees everything, except that maybe the third command center flying to, to the third base right now. Uh oh, Ling's coming in. If they get a wrap around of these Hellions, that'll be very nice. Vindicta with a quick response. It's going to pull those Hellions back to the ramp. But a couple of SCVs on the gas is going down. Scarlet sees the exposed ones, takes down seven, eight workers just like that. Very nicely done there. Scarlet with some good focus fire, trades off those Zerglings. Behind this, she's massing Roaches, Todd. 55 workers plus one range, almost done. Roach speed on the way, she's got Contain tough wings. Yourself, big. Dude, this is, this is a really scary attack. What have you got on the ground as Vindicta to defend this? Literally a couple of Hellions right now. Those Roaches are on the way across the map. The only Battlecruiser's just teleported. He's in trouble right now. This is a very scary And push. manages to reinforce quicker as well from Scarlet. She's dropping that down. All she's gonna have to do is make that in the middle of the fight here. And those units, they're gonna basically teleport from one side of the map to another. Can Vinita mount the defense here? He's getting a bunch of bunkers. Battlecruiser is flying back on the other side of the map. Yamato Cannon still on the way here. 
There's so many Ravagers though. Those Corals Revival are gonna do a ton of damage. Vindicta yeah. trying to hold on here with oh. the wall. He's repairing with everything that he's got. There's nothing to get in the bunkers. Even if the bunkers finish, there's nothing to get inside. Ah, oh, it's just a few Hellions. A tank and a Banshee's about to come out. But the ramp, the depots don't even get raised, Todd. Ah, oh, the Roach Ravager here. Just such a powerful attack and Vindicta not ready for it at all. Look at the supply pig, Scarlet is killing everything and Vindicta is just gonna tap out. GG, Scarlet, very nice. Just too much here for the American player. Crushes through and shows her experience. That's what you get after uh, you get on Scarlet's radar. She gives her absolute best. Yeah, some really good disrupting plays there. Right from map, map number one, doing the thing. I, we really thought she was going to stop that Roach Ravager production, those Zerglings, but she committed to the attack and she continued throughout there, going for a heavy Roach pressure right as the battle cruiser goes to the other side of the map and a very lovely cleanup there. Can't wait to hear from Scarlet down there on the stage with Cloaken. Thank you so much. That's right. I'm here with Canada's own Scarlet. Congratulations on your victory here on the main stage. I gotta ask you, you seemed completely prepared for Vindicta and his strategies. How much did you study him and prepare for this? Uh, did you go into it with the confidence of knowing what you were gonna experience? Actually, I played him in Challenger last season, so I watched a lot of his games before then, and I felt he was really strong in the late game, but he was pretty greedy early on, so I really wanted to end it early. Got it. Well, it worked really great for you. Now, I know you're sitting right there on the bubble as it relates to the Global Finals and the points race. How are you feeling about that right now? I know Laser is kind of probably your target. You're looking at him, round of 16 seed. You're moving on to the round of 24. What is your confidence level right now as it relates to that? And is that your goal? Yeah, I definitely want to make it to the Global Finals. I need to get one more round than Laser at least. So first, I need to beat Moss and Stefano, and then we'll see. But. I did beat Masa the last two times we played, so I have some confidence there. Awesome. Well, good luck as you move on to the playoffs. One last cheer, Scarlet. We're headed back to the desk. Thank you so much. That's right, Scarlet takes the victory here for the knockout bracket in pretty clean fashion, to say the least, with the 3-0 coming on in. A very, very quick finish to our first game. However, it did get dragged out in that second one, and Victor Vindicta was able to hold, hold relatively well. Yeah, that was actually the same map that he ended up taking a victory from Scarlet on their challenger. Wow. Um, so I was like a little worried that would also be the case, but she was able to bust him and actually like go ahead and uh, finalize the kill as a worry. Didn't make any grand comeback. True. So she definitely looked more prepared for him this time. Yeah, we said like it could be very fun unless Scarlet is all business and just wants <laughs> to get the job done fast. And that's mm. kind of what he said there on stage as well. I felt like if you go back to that first game, I really didn't like the tank positioning on Thunderbird. Like no. he brought it on the ramp. I think it's perfect. There's no over. Lord, put it on the edge of your main base, yeah. and then the roaches would really have to go up that ramp to create high ground vision. But then you also have the bunkers all the way on the top side, the tank is all the way on the south side. That becomes really annoying because then Zerk has to run, Banshee comes out, maybe second tank. Like the longer you survive as Terran, obviously the better yeah. it gets, right? So I think that was a mistake. And in that final game as well, I felt like I was like, I think this is doable, but then the supply depot wasn't raised, mm -hmm. the roaches just run in, he's so busy microing the tank that he loses the Banshee to cross a bow. I mean, maybe a little bit of stage jitters as well but I don't think we should focus too much on this series for Vindicta overall awesome run great first real performance at a WCS yeah. circuit event yeah. Scarlet was just a little too good I mean he took down people like Bly and Shadon through mm -hmm. that knockout bracket so those results in themselves are you know those are now I mean Bly especially as a veteran of WCS Shadon is a little bit below that but be overall it's very impressive names to take out it, it is like we should not ignore that and we should mm. definitely give due credit to Vindicta um, so I mean I'm, I'm glad to see also that you know like yeah the North American representation is, is actually real right yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. have not just the the usual names Masa, Scarlet, Special, um, and Neeb, but also you know Estrella and uh, uh, Vindicta just now actually performing. So really excited, North America, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and of course, as you mentioned, Scarlet and Masa are actually going to be going up yeah. against one another next, which that does mean that we will have that all Canadian round of 24 match. And what do you think about the bracket for Scarlet? Obviously, as she is trying to, you know, get to that global final, and as she mentioned at the stage, it is kind of a difficult 
prospect to kind of overcome well, in this current position. It's tricky, but it's also very doable. For mm -hmm. a Scarlet on fire, this is very doable. Like going up against Masa, I think Scarlet, even though she has definitely dropped quite a few series against Masa in her life, I would still say that she's the favorite if she brings her A game. Yeah. Then going up with Stefano, not exactly well known for his ZVZ. <laughs> so actually there's a realistic <laughs> chance that Scarlet makes it at least into the quarterfinals. And then things get very interesting because he's like, all right, I at least have to outperform Elazer yeah. by one round. Elazer will have a pretty damn tough round of 16. I mean, Drogo, an absolute beast in PvZ. Lambo, really good in ZvZ. I think Lambo, Elaza, that's a fun one. That's yeah. flip yeah, a coin, yeah. honestly. Like, those guys can always beat each other at any given moment. So there's a real story there, but it's really hard to look too deep into the record. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do we have any games currently going on? Because we have concluded uh, another match up there, as I think but always was the victorious, and he will be going up against Haas in the next round of round 24. Are there matches? There is a game, Jess. Yes! There's a game. Let's head over. Yes. What do we have? On my laptop. We have Soul versus Drogo, which is clearly going pretty late here. Mm. Um, you know, Soul didn't have the best WCS, but he is trying to stay alive here to down to zero. But it looks like Drogo is a very powerful Protoss late game army. This is where those EMPs, though, actually, we might actually yep. get a battle right now. This is where those those blanket EMPs, uh -huh. he has the upgrade, will once again shine. We could see a massive concave as well, actually doing something nice here. Thunderbird could give us a very long game, so I don't think we're going to watch the whole thing. I think we are. We're going to watch a bit of it. We literally are. There you go. Yeah. Okay. We've well, got 12 <laughs> goals, got by the way. More? Okay. Yeah, we've got 12 goals on the side of Seoul, who's also producing quite a few Vikings. This is going to be really fun, because in the old days, it's always like these battles, they seem so damn difficult to win as a Terran player, it should be a little bit better right now. I really love that Drogo actually used the probe here to yeah. take care of those minerals, and now he actually created a new entrance into these bases of Soul. But yeah, we're going to stay with this. My series, James, unfortunately ended. Yeah. But always 3-0 uh, probe. Wow. That's yep. a pretty decent uh, result for him. He, uh, yep. he actually is a dominant in that region, uh, the way he came through. So unfortunately, mm. but, uh, but always actually has some really good play. But this is a, I, like, I feel like this is a good game going for a really long time. Soul is just getting an expansion. He's actually, Oops. I love these bunkers up against this right side. He knows it's going to be a soft point for him. We do have three nukes on the way. Oh. I think he was a little late to his uh, starport production, so I was, like, a little concerned. But now he's got 12 Vikings, and now he's even adding on uh, potential liberators. Like, I, uh, th this. All right, do you know what Soul should do? Absolutely nothing for a little yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, Create yes. a bank and then free up, like, 25, 30 supply of workers, just mm. lose all of those. And then take a fight with like 165 army supply of ghosts, liberators with advanced ballistics, and a crazy amount of Vikings. And then I think the Terran army is mighty fine. I absolutely agree. Like, it, it's actually very difficult for the Supreme late game, uh, especially if you're able to bully the Protoss back and they can't get an advantageous mm -hmm. position. But speaking of which, there's no observer. Yes, there is actually. But he's going to go for it. Oh, the attempt to blink forward to take it out. He gets the EMPs on the storms. There's still a very hefty Protoss army left over. Well, actually, if, where, if there's no the extra storms there, it actually gets that a little works. bit dicey. But the Viking count not that high. Good stalker positioning, by the way, by Drogo. Yes. Yeah, I think he, he saw that coming. He knew that the EMP was going to get thrown down. And here are those backup storms. In fact, a lot of backup storms coming in. So the Nexus is going to have to be canceled. But he's actually going to take the fight. Where and this is a ghosts? lot of Argons. The ghosts, well, there they are, EMPing everything. But a little late to the storm. EMP means the Vikings are getting destroyed in the air by only and only taking out one Colossus. That's not going to be enough. The rest of the ground army is going to have to retreat for Soul, and he's going to have to try again later. He just had 12 goals. That definitely did not look like an army that had 12 goals, as he's losing a few more here. Like Soul's at 160 supply, but it felt that most of it there was medevacs, actually. That really yeah. didn't feel like his entire army. Yeah, there was, uh, it was more than eight medevacs, but still. A lot of medevacs there. Um, he is going to be able to hold, I believe. The armor supply is not that different, and the upgrades are actually okay as well. Uh, but it looks like he's going to take some damage. And as I said, this could go on for a while longer. Maybe this is the GG moment, but I just, I don't know. It's Thunderbird, I think, defensively. Soul's going to have another chance for another fight. I mean, if Drogo brings a prism here, I'm actually starting to believe that he could potentially end it, even though yeah. Soul is looking pretty strong defensively. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, maxed out Protoss with 6K minerals in the bank, James. Yeah, you can keep <laughs> the pressure on for a little while. You think like so? It. Yeah. All right. And uh, I believe that does it for us here. Now we're going to go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen, for WCS Fall. And next up, we have Kelazo versus Denver, I believe, is our next match. Uh, going to be on the mainstream. And, of course, we'll have our BCD streams, all the B streams uh, going on for our knockout bracket to continue things on. So join us right after this, ladies and gentlemen, for more WCS Fall.